What's up, y'all? Y'all know who it is. Y'all know what it is. Your boy JP comes out with another how-to, and today I'm going to show you how to solder your CD player wires. Now, if this is your first time tuning into the channel, please consider subscribing because this is what we do here. Car audio tutorials, radio removals, Q&As, all that good stuff. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So we need some wire strippers. Of course, we need solder. Now there's actually two types of solder. You got, well, there's a couple different types. You have electrical solder, and then you have the metal solder. Metal solder is for like joining pipes and stuff like that together. We want to use electrical for our electrical wires inside our car. Now, you also have lead solder and lead free solder. Even though lead free solder is more environmental friendly, the lead solder actually heats up quicker. You can use either one you want. Uh, a lot of people like to choose the lead solder just make sure you don't breathe that stuff in next we have our soldering tools now I will go more in an in-depth uh, video about all of these a little later but uh, you have your soldering iron uh, this is corded so it will need to be plugged in you have a portable soldering iron and it takes butane gas you refill it just like a lighter right there at the bottom you have this portable groove right here I like this because it takes my Milwaukee batteries um, you also have this is for your heavy-duty wire so you have an actual solder gun and when you click that the light comes on that tip gets heated up it's corded as well uh, not only that they have some soldering stations to where you can like adjust and those are corded as well but those are the soldering tools now uh, you also want some type of sponge you can go to the Dollar Tree and get you a, a sponge for a dollar and just wet it because that's going to help clean these tips to make the tips clean I also has like a little brush pad metal brush pad that I can clean it with you want to use some tape uh, to clean up your connections or heat shrink I will show you both of them man let's go ahead and get started all right so there's a couple different ways that we can go about getting these wires ready and prepped to actually be soldered is when we strip our wire back we'll kind of unravel it a little bit you know just kind of like untwist them together once you strip it and then we're gonna join them together like this after we do that, you want to be careful, grab that in and grab this in, and then we want to twist. So I will hold it with my right, twist with my left, and then vice versa with the other hand, and then boom. Sometimes when you join them together like that and you go in to grab it, you can poke yourself with, uh, with the wire, uh, and that thing will kind of pierce the skin a little bit, and it's just irritating. So let me show you my favorite way to do it. I'll take the wire, strip it, and then I'll twist them together like that. And you actually got to strip away about a little bit over a quarter, it's almost about a half an inch, and then you want to make an X. Once we make that X, then we can do the same thing and just twist that wire around like this. You still have to be careful that you don't really poke yourself with the wire, but it's just easier for me to do it like that. So to clean our soldering iron, we just want to get it hot. Once it's hot enough, we can go ahead and do some light taps on that wet sponge and then kind of swish it around inside that metal brush. And that's going to clean all that old solder off of your uh, soldering iron. Next, we want to tin it a little bit by placing some solder on there and then repeating that process just to make sure that we don't have anything on our soldering tip before we go to our new connection. So before we start soldering, we want to go ahead and tin that iron one more time. And now the key here is to actually get that wire hot enough to where we can just feed our solder right into the wire. So I want to place my iron on the wire and then I want to take my solder and go right in between where they meet, where the wire and the iron meet. And then as it starts to soak up, now I can take my solder and just kind of feed it into the wire. So right now the wire is hot enough to where I don't even have to touch it on the tip of the iron. I could just feed it in once I get done with that I will take my iron and just kind of go across the bottom just so I can clean it up I was just gonna tape this up then I would just take my electrical tape start on one end of course you can tear some tape off if you want to but I like to pull and and pull and flip or however you want to do it just so I get the tightest one possible rip that off twist it together and then now that's very nice and skinny and it's tight now this is a good enough cleanup with just the electrical tape uh, the only downside to actually using electrical tape by itself is that when it gets really hot outside that this electrical tape does tend to get hot and unravel and kind of slide down and then your wire is still exposed so if you're going to do electrical tape I would uh, tell you guys to get your harness together and maybe zip tie the whole thing or take it a step further and use some uh, Tessa tape and then rewrap your whole harness uh, that way just kind of gives you that little extra protection or you can use the better way and actually use heat shrink so let me show you how to do that 
Now this right here is an assorted set of heat shrink and of course I put all these links in the description for you but you want to get the best heat shrink size to match what you're doing. You want to want to use this for a single wire because that thing is going to slide off. Even if it shrinks down to half its size, it still won't be tight enough on those wires. So you want to go down to maybe something like this. It's like 5 30 seconds or 3 sixteenths. Now you want to take in consideration that you're going to be twisting two wires together and you're going to be soldering them. So it's going to be a little bit bulky. So what you want to do is take that and make sure that it's going to go from insulation to insulation on both sides and it will fit. So this one does from our little test piece that I did before I did that purple one. So I'm going to get these and now that I have my wires stripped back, I'm going to go ahead and kind of preload heat shrink on all of the wires that we're going to use. If you just leave this like this, even though we have them pushed down all the way, once you start soldering, if these things slide up closer to your joints, the heat from that soldering iron can shrink your heat shrink. So you want to make sure that this is down as much as possible. So I like to push them all down. And then what I do is I just take some electrical tape or my Tessa tape. I tell you what, let's use Tessa tape because it's not as sticky and we'll just just test the tape that right there now i can go ahead and twist my wires together and i don't have to worry about the heat shriek moving or getting touched by that heat and shrinking up too early than what we want so there's different ways that you can kind of hook up your soldering station me i like to just make sure that my wires aren't touching the table so i have two pieces of scrap wood uh you can go out and buy some clamps uh that will help you um i'll go ahead and put those links in the description as well i don't have any of that i'm just kind of thugging it out with what i got uh but as you can see i got all my wires twisted up real nice and neat and now let's go ahead and get soldered. So while this is going right here, I want to talk about one component that I didn't mention and it's called flux. So flux is this kind of paste that you will put on your wires. You either dip your wires in them or you can use a brush and you kind of brush the paste onto the wires before you actually solder. It's going to help it soak the solder up and it's going to help protect against oxidation so your connection doesn't get corroded long term. Now I don't really use flux all the um, ever, uh, but it is a good thing that you guys can use. You don't absolutely need it, but if you do have it, it will help protect your connections they are all soldered they are all good now we can take the tape off of this and now we can slide our heat shrink down right over all of our connections use uh, anything that's gonna give off of some heat to shrink this that's why it's called heat shrink you just apply heat and that stuff starts to get a little smaller and tired you can do them individually if you want i'm gonna try to do them all at the same time uh i'm just using this regular lighter you can use a cigarette lighter heat gun whatever you got at the house Now it's time for the pull test. Best connections, baby. These aren't going anywhere. At this point, your CD player harness is already finished. It has the best connection. It's heat shrunk, all that good stuff. Um, you can zip tie. Uh, me, personally, I like to test and tape it, but I'll go ahead and do that one. Uh, yeah, so that looks a little bit cleaner to me. I just like the way that that looks with that test of tape on there. But either way, if you guys found any value in this video, please like, subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff. All the links of the products that I have will be in the description below. Until next time, this is your boy JP signing out. Peace.